Are you considering receiving energy therapy but aren't sure about how to find the right practitioner? Well, I'm going to give you five red flags to look out for. This is not an attack on energy healers at all. I've been an energy healer for over 20 years now, and I've worked with some really great healers. And I worked with some folks who were calling themselves energy healers, but kind of missing the mark on a few things. So these are just my observations on bad behaviors that don't promote wellness. I have a gift from God to fix people. We don't fix people. An energy healer provides the tools necessary to help you heal yourself. We provide grounding where it's needed. We balance subtle energies that are unbalanced because of trauma. We, we hold space to help facilitate your healing. And we teach you how to maintain that balance in your everyday life. Energy healers are not doctors or wizards or messiahs. They're human beings. They're not perfect. And they're not more spiritually pure than you. But when you make someone feel better, well, they tend to shower you with praise and gifts. And I've even gotten a few marriage proposals in the past. It makes you feel special. And who doesn't want to feel special? For some, that praise brings an inflated sense of personal power. And I'm not saying they're consciously doing it. But gosh, I've worked with a lot of healing practitioners that are in it for the ego boost. These would be your guru types. Truth is, without a certain sense of ego, we wouldn't have the self-confidence to do this work. But if your energy healer thinks that they have special powers that set them above others, well, that's called a power trip. They're not the chosen one. I never do shadow work. That's evil. Shadow work is not only not evil, it's very necessary for healing from trauma. Lightworkers are the energy healers who use what they refer to as love and light to do their healing work. No dark energies will ever cross their paths. They work in a higher vibration, often accompanied by angels whom they consider their personal etheric servants. Unfortunately, lightworkers can be only doing part of the necessary work and leaving you with a false sense of well-being. I admit, it does create job security since your issue keeps coming back. A lot of healing modalities teach that various emotional and physical dysfunctions do come from within. So why would you just go over the surface area and not delve deeper into the cause of the trauma? It, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound and expecting the owie to just go away. Without going in and really seeking what's causing the problem, you just can't really heal from it. That's just like wiping the surface dirt off and leaving the deeper wound to fester. This is why shadow work is important. There is no good and evil in energy work, only function and dysfunction. And both of them exist in the light as well as the dark. Energy healers that make you think that washing it all away with love and light will fix the deeper issues are just setting you up for failure. Oh, that mantra I gave you isn't working. Well, you're not believing in it hard enough. This is spiritual gaslighting. Want to manifest all the health, wealth, and happiness you desire? Take this supplement. Drink that potion. Use this mantra. Are they not working? Well, that's your fault. Spiritual gaslighters will say that if your energy healing goals are not met, well, you're doing it wrong. The lack of results is your fault. Illness is not a spiritual failing. But phrases like, well, you're just not believing enough, present it as such. While it's true that a lot of energetic imbalances are caused by self-sabotage, there are also a lot of environmental, genetic, and social factors that can affect your course of treatment success. Making you feel like the course of treatment isn't working because you have a spiritual deficiency causes even more trauma. And energy healers are supposed to do no harm. Happiness is a choice. Good vibes only. And we have toxic positivity. Toxic positivity goes right along with spiritual gaslighting. When you're struggling with the healing process and the practitioner says things like good vibes only, happiness is a choice. Well, if everything happens for a reason, these can really interfere with your progress. Spouting hollow cliches lacks empathy and prevents functional healing. You know what's a better cliche? You can't polish a turd. It's imperative to acknowledge the bad feelings and work through them in order to heal. 
Sometimes that low vibration is nothing that you have control over. PMS is real. Estrogen is a hell of a drug. Clinical depression is not going to go away with the power of positive thinking. PTSD triggers can't always be predicted. Anxiety? Well, anxiety is a survival mechanism. Stuffing them down with feel-good mantras? Well, that's fake and it's only going to exacerbate the problem. If an energy healer presents the concept that you need to be in a complete state of euphoric bliss in every waking moment of your life, step away. That's not realistic and it really invalidates your healing process. I know that happiness can be an act of defiance, but you can't sprinkle glitter on a turd and expect it to stop stinking. No, no. Archangel healing is the only thing that works. There is no one true way. Is the energy healer telling you that they know the one true method of healing and nothing else is valid? The fact that there are a lot of different energy healing modalities should let you know that there are many, many ways to provide treatment. Reiki, chakra balancing, crystals, polarity therapy, quantum touch, all valid tools. Just like in allopathic medicine, one course of treatment may work for some people and not for others. Being well-rounded in various modalities gives the energy healer more tools to help you. There are many paths to the same source, and it's the energy healer's job to find the path that works for you, even if that means referring you to another practitioner. Life is an ongoing healing experience. Existence is often trauma, but finding an energy healer shouldn't be. Most energy healers are genuinely devoted to the well-being of others. And those that set off the red flags, well, sometimes that's pretty much what they were taught to believe, so they don't know they're doing any harm. Even so, these bad habits may get in the way of your healing process. Now, if you're an energy healer that recognizes yourself with any of these red flags, please don't consider this a personal attack. Just ask yourself why you are identifying with what I'm saying. What about this video has triggered your emotional response? Rather than leave me hateful comments, please just go back and contemplate a new perspective on being an energy healer. You can't be woke without self-reflection.